Okay, welcome back. Well, before I start, I guess I should say this is my first dry run with the new equipment. I've got the Yeti, blue, I guess the Blue Yeti microphone and the uh, stand and the Blue Yeti uh, isolator for sound. So hopefully the audio in these videos get better. That's been my main goal was to increase the audio quality in the training videos. and been waiting a while to get this stuff and picked it up on... Amazon this week so this will be the first video with it so hopefully it all comes out good in the end and we're good to go so what I want to talk about a little bit tonight was where we are on the project what I'm thinking and try to give you an idea of how this thing's going to look when the middleware is finished kind of an API approach and how we're coming about this thing so the first thing you're going to notice is two new classes te or, uh, projects a test BLL and a BLL, Business Logic Layer, and that's from my CSLA days, um, but inside of these Business Logic Layers and the Test Business Logic Layers, just what it says, we've got business objects, which are representations, it just so happens in this case, uh, pretty close representation to the database, and we've got data transfer objects, and you say, well, what, what's the point in that? Well, let's think about it. The Entity Framework in the EF, when it generated our entity framework, it generated uh, some classes for us. It generated person class, if we look at it, which is got all the properties from over here on our left, our database. And it also contains an eye collection of your manager and a eye collection of report entries. Well, the whole goal here is to decouple ourselves from entity framework so that if we do ASP.NET or we do Windows Forms we can do it in such a way that we don't have to rewrite all our business logic and worry about rules and things like that again and so uh, what we're doing is we're abstracting the entity framework by one project this BLL now it should be noted that in the BLL we still have to reference the entity framework because we're using some things from the entity framework uh, in these business objects that we're going to consume later. But it should also be noted that any project that consumes this BLL project does not have to it reference the entity framework. For instance, the test BLL. You'll remember when we wrote the test, since we went directly against the entity framework, our references included the entity framework. Well, when we wrote the test for our BLL and we go to our references, we do not reference the entity framework. We merely reference the business logic layer of the status report. So we have successfully decoupled the consumer from the entity framework. So let's take a look at what we're doing. First, let's think about uh, how it's going to work. Think about yourself as a Windows program or a web program, whatever you're more comfortable with. You're going to make a call to some middleware. And you're going to say, middleware, I want this person and I want their reports for a given time period. I do that every week. Or you're the report and you're the user and you're saying, I want to submit my reports. Okay, makes sense. So we would make a call to an object and tell that object, give me a person and also give me their reports through this time period. The problem is that we don't want, like I said, to expose the entity framework to you, the Windows program. So we have to go through a little bit of pain ourselves as a middleware designer to accomplish that task. They're called data transfer objects. Now, I use a tool called CodeSmith to generate my data transfer objects, about 90% of them. Because if we look at a data transfer object, the person for instance, it's nothing but a, and notice I did include some WCF tags on here so that if we want to go through WCF, I've got the data contract and the data member to, uh, descriptors here so we can use them to transmit 
and serialize across the wire via WCF if we chose to do so. Now whether or not I do that here I don't know. Probably not because I know that this application is going on a WAN, or I'm sorry, on a LAN that's got VPN. It's not allowed out on the web. So I probably won't worry about WCF. It would, it would add another layer of abstraction I don't need. But I'm writing the API in such a way that if I want to come in here and make a bonus video about how to consume it through WCF, it's very simple. And I'm I'm going to do that at the end. We'll do a little WCF package at the last video, uh, maybe some JSON or something like that. But we're going to write it like an API to where we know that the parent-child objects, the person is the parent, the reports are the children, and we're going to do all of our work through the single object person. Okay? But in order to transmit data back and forth between the API and you, the Windows Forms, or the Web Forms, we have to have a common language we speak, a common representation of what a person is. And you'll see here that it's very similar to what the entity framework generated, minus this is new and is deleted hashtag. The is deleted we're not really going to use, and I'll show you why. Uh, in WCF we may use them, and that's why I put them in there. The generator does it for me. But we also have a list of our reports. So it's almost identical to what the Entity Framework does for us. But there's no business logic here. The person data transfer object doesn't know how to save itself. It doesn't know anything. And that's the goal. We don't want the transfer objects to have any knowledge of the business rules. I shouldn't say the business rules, the database functions. So let's look at a real business object, in this case the person. We can see that we expose functions just like we do in any other where we do basic CRUD stuff, but we've got in the person and in the report entry, we've got this region down here called conversion. And notice report entry doesn't have anything in it but conversion, and that it's static. And so is the person, static. And all the conversion method does is converts it from a data transfer object to one of our, well, converts it to a data transfer object in this case and converts it to an entity framework object from a data transfer object in this case but not at a user visible layer and we'll see that in the person so let's say you're the windows object and you say give me a person and give me their reports since january the fifteenth you would make a call as we've done in our test and you would say two lines of code. I'm expecting back a person transfer object, P, and through my API, give me the person with ID 3. I want to deep load them, meaning I want to go ahead and load up their report entries, because you may not. You may just want the person's data, their name, their, you know, passwords, stuff like that. And here's the date range that I want you to give me their entries for. Because heavens knows you don't just want to say true and give them all their entries by default. Uh, that's a performance nightmare. Unfortunately, it's not well taught, but trust me, don't do it. And then you're going to send it back. So let's look at what happens in this case. In this case, it reaches out to the person object. It calls the get person, passes the primary key. Now, we're going to also overload this method to where you can search by last name and it would return what? A list of people of these data transfer objects. We're not there yet. We haven't got that far. It's not the point of this video. This video is to get you started so that you can download the source code and start to get an idea of how we're headed down this road. But let's look at it. What it's going to do, and this is why we have reference to the Entity Framework, is it is using our Entity Framework 
project, the status entities, it's going to take a person DTO, allocate it, it's going to use the context from the entity framework, and it's going to say, look, give me the people where their primary key, the ID, is this ID singular default. And then what it's going to do, this is, as you'll remember, an entity framework person object. This is not the person object we're going to send over the wire. We need to convert that object to a data transfer object. So that's what we do in the very next step. Remember, this P is a person data transfer object. So we're going to convert it. We're going to pass whether or not they want to deep load, the start date, and the end date. And we're going to return it. And if we come down here to the conversion, it's not that hard. The entity framework object comes down. We load up a person data transfer object. We check, and in this case, we don't even really need to care about the deep load because we just see, uh, well, actually, there's a bug, right? <laughs> That's OK, where we deal with the children. Uh, we need to come in here, and we need to say if deep load. I'm not going to edit this because I'm going to leave it in there to prove that I'm not perfect. If deep load load the children where they fall in the range that you specified. Simple. So what are we doing? I'm going to wrap this up, keep it under 15 minutes. We're writing an API. It's static. It uses data transfer objects, which are dumb objects that contain data to communicate across a wire. Could be WCF, could be straight across a wire, could be whatever we want. We've made sure that those data transfer objects do include what would be needed for WCF. I generated these in CodeSmith. I think you can go to codesmithtools.com. Can't say enough good thing about their CodeSmith generator. Uh, they're great, great people, um, and I believe they're a Texas company, so that's even better, and fellow Texans. So you want the template? I'll send it to you. Simply send me a message. But we're going to send this data transfer object back over the wire to the caller, in this case you, the Windows form, or the ASP.NET app, and then you're going to display it in a grid or let them manipulate the data transfer object, and then guess what? You're going to save it in some way. And you can look at the test here to see how we do that. We test you save with reports, without reports. It's an insert, it's a delete. We'll get into that next video because save is really complicated. Uh, in code, it's not. And you'll notice, that because I know you're going to look ahead, but I'm going to show you anyway. Uh, if we look at save, I always put the MSDN link where you can find more data about what I'm doing. If it's something I think you may have questions on. So you can look in here and see what I've done in the case of an update and a new. But because we're using data transfer objects, there are some special considerations we have to take into account. So hopefully this video helped. It's a start into our middleware, our API, if you will. I mean, it's not a true API, but it's middleware written with an API slant, I guess you could say. And we'll be building this out over the weekend. Hopefully I'll get another video posted before Sunday where we finish up and wrap up this BLL, get the test finished up. Um, if it's approaching 15 minutes, then I'll do two videos, and then we will start the really fun stuff, which is to generate the actual GUI application, which we're going to go ahead and do a Windows Forms app just to keep it simple. Uh, ASP.NET, because we're doing this as an API-ish middleware uh, as long as, remember, in our app.config, we include that connection strings. Uh, as long as we put that in there, uh, we can use it in any kind of application we want. So be sure and give this video a like if you liked it. Please do subscribe. We ask you to support the channel, and the best way you can do that is by liking and subscribing. Just take a quick moment to do so. I show the subscribe button at the beginning and end of each video. You can look down in the comments for where to get the source code. Uh, this is part of a series of videos, so if you go to youtube.com slash texaslakehouse, you can find the playlist of building a real-world EF or entity framework application. 
and just go ahead and watch the series if you want starting at video one so again hope you enjoyed it hope it helped and we'll see you next time thanks for stopping by